There's always so many new fragrances coming out and I'm always reporting on them to you guys, letting you guys know which new fragrances are soon to drop or are launching. And then there's always fragrances that we're forgetting about. I've forgotten about so many fragrances and I thought I'd pull together a video of some of the, my favorite fragrances that I've spoken about in the past to let you know about them in case you haven't heard about them. These are really, really great fragrances that definitely need to be highlighted. They're forgotten fragrances that need to be known about. There's one fragrance here that actually I just heard about, but as a community, the fragrance community doesn't really talk about this one, it definitely needs to be highlighted as well. So I've got 15 fragrances that are forgotten about that definitely need to be discovered coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, I'm talking about 15 forgotten fragrances that need to be rediscovered today. 14 of them I've spoken about on the channel quite a bit, dating back to the start of this particular channel. Uh, this particular channel was launched in 15, 2015. I started doing videos in 2012. There's also one fragrance here in this video that I just discovered myself, but I wanted to highlight it because this fragrance is kind of forgotten I think and no one really talks about it and it's really really great it comes from a hyped brand but I never hear this one being spoken about so let's go ahead and get started the first fragrance I'm going to talk about is sell the vetiver from the house of the different company are you guys familiar with this house they used to sell this house at Barney's here in San Francisco, but obviously Barney's closed down, completely went out of business, and the brand, I don't know what happened to it. I know they're still out there. In fact, I saw them at Exxon's, I believe they were there, but this fragrance is probably one of their best and one of my favorites from this house, along with a couple others that I have as well. This is Sell the Vetiver, a wonderful offering from this house. It is a salty vetiver fragrance, and I like this combination. Kind of might remind someone of Anique Guttal's vetiver fragrance, because that was also a salty salty vetiver fragrance and this one also has citruses with like grapefruit and bergamot and of course grapefruit really enhances some vetiver notes brings out more of a grapefruitiness there's also iris here and also cardamom with ylang ylang and of course geranium uh, this is a wonderful offering if you're a vetiver lover you got to get your nose on it really great classy vetiver and salt together match made in heaven who thought that would have worked but it works so sell the vetiver from the house of the different company is the first fragrance i'm talking about the next fragrance i'm talking about is a fragrance called uh, patchouli by nino this one right here and this is from a house called nino amadeo so if you guys don't know the story nino amadeo used to be part of reminiscence reminiscence was a patchou not patchouli reminiscence was a jewelry brand that also had great fragrances and one of their fragrances is is patchouli fragrance really one of the most popular patchouli fragrances out there but reminiscence no longer is connected to the perfume brand is no longer connected to the jewelry brand and nino amadea is no longer connected to the perfume brand that sells uh, the the perfumes from reminiscence he started his own company called nino amadeo and he launched a patchouli fragrance which to me is kind of sort of similar to reminiscence uh, javoy psychedelic Le reads patchouli antique and so on and so on this has notes of patchouli with cacao vanilla sandalwood amber leather myrrh saffron and bergamot and if you like the idea of earthy patchouli dry woody and also kind of chocolate cakey vanillic ambery when it's drying down you gotta try this one. This is just a beautiful patchouli fragrance and also I believe it's under $150 for 100 ml. So great price and also delicious fragrance. So patchouli by Nino is a great offering. So this is a house called Strange Love and this is Fall Into Stars. So I stopped talking about this house because I kind of got bored of oud and this house does really great oudy fragrances. Fall Into Stars along with Dead of Night are two really intense oudy woody fragrances. Uh, uh, the the other one dead of night dead of night actually goes uh, kind of animalic and this one is not as much this is with oud and along with narcissus palisander vanilla and pink pepper and i like the fact that it has this kind of vanillic note here to give it some sweetness because the fragrance does need it and sometimes oud fragrances can get boring and it needs some sweetening up because i like my fragrances to be a little sweet not necessarily uber savory and this one definitely has the right amount with that pink pepper and that floral touch 
of the Narcissus. It is animalic, but not as much of Dead of Night, but definitely a really wonderful offering and definitely a fragrance I had forgotten about and circling back to it now and highlighting it for you guys. Are you a fan of this house, Strange Love? Dead of Night is not th this one. This is Fallen to Stars. Definitely a lot easier to wear than Dead of Night if you don't like animalic fragrances. Now, this next fragrance I first wore back in the early 2000s or uh, probably the early 2010s, late 2000s. This is from a house called Gutal. It used to be called Anique Gutal. I believe it used to change. It changed to Gutal Paris, and I think right now it's called Gutal. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't dug into the brand, and the labels have been changed as of late as well. But this is Dual. Dual is a mate focused fragrance, and when I wear this one, the mate acts like dry grass. So there's a grassiness about this one. But of course, it's a tea, a kind of a greenish tea. So it's got that kind of a cozy factor about it but along with the mate it has this kind of bitter pentagram note it's citrus note it has a kind of citrus woodiness along with the artemisia orris root leather gayak and musk it's a great fragrance that i had forgotten about i completely forgot about it and this this along with sable and a few other fragrances from this house were definitely my top favorite uh, fragrances but glad it's still around and it's a wonderful offering especially if you like the idea of tea uh, mate and things like that together in one fragrance. So this is Dual from the house of uh, Gutal or Gutal Paris. That is a wonderful offering. Now, this next fragrance is a fragrance I first discovered from this house way back in 2013. I'd never heard of Parfumerie Generale, which used to be the name of this house. Then the perfumer who did the fragrances for Parfumerie Generale, and he had a few other collections as well, he just named it after his own name, Pierre Guillaume. And of course, the uh, it's still around. It's Cose is the fragrance. I discovered it back in 2013 on a trip in the south of France in a town called Aix-en-Provence. There was a tiny little perfume shop there. I walked in and discovered these four or five different brands I had not heard of and then discovered Musk Maori and then also Cose and then walked out with Cose. Cose is chocolate, dark chocolate with patchouli, tobacco. There's cannabis here so it's got that green bitterness, kind of light camphoric touch and then of course it also has pepper, ebony wood, paprika, coffee, cedar, vanilla and sandalwood. Really a great fragrance. It's not necessarily gourmand. It's a nice combination of all these notes working beautifully together. The chocolate or the dark chocolate in here is not necessarily sweet but sweet enough to kind of balance out all the bitterness from all the other notes a really wonderful offering one of my favorites now 10 years later i still love it it's cozy and a wonderful offering and remember i said these are forgotten fragrances so i'm re-highlighting or highlighting fragrances that I used to speak a lot about on the channel and definitely worth for you guys to discover if you haven't sampled them yet. Okay, so this next fragrance is the fragrance I was talking about that the community doesn't really talk about and I just discovered it for the first time. I have a tester bottle here and it's one that I really like from the house of Amouage. Now, Amouage is a hype brand. A lot of people talk about it, but I never hear anybody talking about Gold Man. Do you guys know about this one? Gold Man is so, so good. Very classic and also a bit feminine leaning. So I feel like this is a definitely a gender bending fragrance. It has a major, major, super potent amount of Lily of the Valley, which typically I find in feminine fragrances with fragrances like Diorissimo and things like that. But this one also has loads of civet. So it's kind of animalic and it balances out all that green floralcy of the Lily of the Valley, tones it down and becomes a nice contrast. So it's Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, Civet, Musk, Oak Moss, Amber, Myrrh, Cedar, Incense, Sandalwood, Patchouli, Rose Hips. What a combination of notes. What a wonderful fragrance. Very classic vintage smelling to me. A woman can totally pull this one off and the man can totally do it as well. You've got to be into the green floral touches of the Lily of the Valley and you also have to like floral notes and civet together. It's quite musky and also very vintage smelling. Absolutely love this one. I can't believe I hadn't smelled it for a long time until I ended up with this bottle. Man, it smells so good. It does have a very 40s, 50s, 60s kind of a smell and I like that about it. It just totally takes me back. Like I I went back in time and was wearing fragrance back then. If you don't know Goldman, definitely check it out. It's from Amouage. If you like vintage -y smells, you've got to get your nose on that one. Now, this next brand I used to speak about quite a bit, although I only have two fragrances from the house. Lavande and this one, Ombre Loop, from the house of Rania J. And I forgot about it because, you know, new fragrances come out and I move on and I put things in the back. I'm sure you guys do that, right? You get new fragrances and the old ones get pushed back and then you're digging around and you go... 
Oh my God, I haven't worn that one. I want to pull it out and wear it. What, let me know if anything like that has happened to you recently. Put a comment down with which fragrance it is. But Ombre Loop to me is a very balsamic and resinous amber fragrance. It has loads of Peru balsam along with labdanum. Labdanum is what they use to create the amber accord. So it's Peru balsam, vanilla, labdanum. To me, this fragrance smells like the holidays and dough. Like imagine you're, you're making some bread and you've got all this yeast and dough kind of preparation and you've set it up and it's rising that smell that's what it reminds me of and the fact that it has lots of spices and also cloves it gives you that kind of holiday-ish vibe like you're making you know cookies breads cakes and things and you've got all this doughy things happening and the smell that's what this reminds me of but still it's a very ambery fragrance but for me it's a balsamic and doughy smelling amber so ombre loop from the house of Rania J Definitely a forgotten fragrance, but definitely smelling great. Moving on to a house that I really, really enjoy. And it's a, it's a classic house. It's been around since the 1200s, but I don't think they made fragrances back then. Probably they did, but none of them are in existence right now. It's a, a house from Florence. It's one of their oldest pharmacies that creates fragrances. Santa Maria Novella and this fragrance called Melograno, this one right here. If you guys ever make it to Florence, you've got to go visit this place. This place is amazing. And in fact, I have a tour video of the actual you know, uh, pharmacy and behind the scenes where you guys in the normal public, general public, don't have access to. You can watch the video of going into places that can't get in if you go visit this place. Uh, but this is Melograno, and it's one of my favorite fragrances from this house. And for me, this has a lot of scent memories. For some reason, this fragrance, when I smell it, it takes me back to when I was young and smelling toiletries and perfume from people that I remember as adults around me. I don't know what that what it is about this one. It's a very clean and powdery fragrance, even though it's called Melograno, which translates to pomegranates. Where are the pomegranates in here? I don't really get pomegranates. I get very kind of classic smelling fragrances and toiletries and things like that. Very clean smelling, very soapy. Imagine a very expensive bar of soap you're lathering with. That smell, that kind of really beautiful, silky, smooth smell, kind of powdery. That's what this smells like. Again, no pomegranates for me, but it's an absolute delight to wear this one. This is their newest bottle, new label. They have, they used to have uh, refillable bottles or like uh, decantable bottles. Sadly, those sprayers, I didn't like the fact that they were big, but they sprayed much better than their new sprayers, unfortunately. Hopefully they'll change the sprayers, but this stuff is amazing. If you don't know Melograno, do check it out, but don't buy it thinking you're gonna get pomegranates because there ain't no pomegranates in that. The next fragrance is going to the house of Atkinson's. This is another brand that used to be sold here at Barney's when Barney's was around. Barney's completely went out of business and they had some of the best fragrances uh, any from any department store. This is Atkinson's and it's Oud Save the King. Oud Save the King was a love at first sniff to me. It's an oud that's very easy to wear. It also had light hints of something like tobacco, vanille, so it was lightly gourmand, vanillic, and things like that, but it's super delicious. Very easy to wear oud, very intense, strong, sweet, and woody, uh, wonderful offering with suede, orris, oud, sandalwood, earl grey tea, and bergamot. I don't know what happened to the brand. I don't think they're really around much in 2019 when I went to London in January 2019 they had a store in the Burlington Arcade in London really close to uh, Raja Parfum's uh, bo um, boutique in the Burlington Arcade in fact they had a really wonderful s store they had a barbershop downstairs and a kind of a museum like space up top in fact I even got a shave and a uh, haircut there but Last time I went, they weren't there, but the brand's still kind of around, and I highly recommend Atkinson's Oud Save the King. So check that one out. It's a wonderful offering from that house. Up next, going to the house of Dunhill, and this is one of the best fragrances from this house with this collection of fragrances focusing on genres or notes, specific fragrances. This is Indian Sandalwood, this one right here. Let me turn around. So Indian Sandalwood, actually the name is right on top here, if you can see. So Indian sandalwood has got to be one of the creamiest, most smooth and milky lactonic uh, uh, sandalwood fragrances. It has some vegetal touches. It has kind of like powdery touches with the orris. So it kind of creates a kind of a light vegetal touch. But they've also thrown in carrots here. And carrots are sometimes used to replace orris or iris, vice versa. So it intensifies the kind of vegetal touch. But it's very, very creamy, smooth wear. It's very woody, milky lactonic qualities 
but a really great fragrance. One of the best from this house and one of the best in general from um, this collection because they have a ton of different fragrances. I find this and a couple others might be okay, but they have some bad ones uh, as well. This is definitely the top. This is Indian Sandalwood from the House of Dunhill. If you don't know that one, do check that one out. Up next, going to the house of Parfums Dusita, this is Isara, this one right here. So recently I featured a fragrance from Parfums Dusita in Scent Club Kit number 5. It was called, or it's called Fleur de Lalita, a very green floral fragrance. In fact, we still have some kit number 5 left if you haven't picked up your kit yet. Uh, we're almost sold out finally with that one, so selling out very soon. But Isara is a fragrance I had forgotten about, and it was the first fragrance I discovered from this house. It's kind of a barbershoppy fougere, not kind of, it's definitely is but more of a warm fougere amber fougere because there's definitely kind of a honeyed quality about this one kind of a drizzling of honey on top of the fougere notes it's tobacco there's tobacco here along with coumarin which is basically uh, tonka beans and then there's sage pine needles oak moss bourbon vetiver woods amber and musk really super delicious takes me back to classic days it does have kind of a classic barbershoppy kind of a quality that uh, really kind of takes me back but really wonderful and a very unisex offering but still kind of I think leans masculine so Issa is a wonderful offering that I've forgotten about, but really delicious fougere barbershop uh, fragrance warmed up by like a honey touch there. The next fragrance going to the house of Paris Monte Carlo. This is a Santal du Pacifique and the Extra de Parfum Concentration. Second of three sandalwood fragrances in this video. I do like sandalwood. I, sandalwood is one of my favorite woody notes. And I'll get to the next one next. But this one, this is the extra de parfum version. And it's even more intense, more smooth, more creamy, and just really, really beautiful. It's a bit more simplistic than the last sandalwood. It's mostly just sandalwood and also some floral notes. But I feel like there's definitely something carroty in here, like the carrot seeds or something iris-like to give it the, a light vegetal touch. But it's super potent, really intense, very cozy, creamy, milky, lactonic sandalwood with that kind of vegetal touch. And of course, some floral undertones. They're very, very minute amounts of flowers. So this is Santal du Pacifique from Paris Monte Carlo. And that's the Extra de Parfum concentration. And then we're moving on to another sandalwood fragrance. And the first fragrance from this house that I really got into and reviewed on the channel. This is Amarud's Santal des Indes, or des Indes, I think. I'm not really saying that correctly. Uh, the, the French in that part for me is not the easiest, but most likely it translates to sandalwood from the Indies. But this is a green sandalwood with an overdose of absinthe. I really, really love the smell of absinthe and fragrances or licorice or anise and things like that. Really love the taste of it. I drink it, consume it, love it. And I like it in fragrances as well. And it's a nice unusual contrast throwing it in here with the sandalwood fragrance. But in addition to the sandalwood and the absinthe here, absinthe has a very kind of a green booziness so if you don't know what it smells like i highly recommend you guys to, you know check some fragrances out with this note but it's sandalwood with vetiver there's leather here musk cedar curry tree turkish rose narcissus incense and of course absence it's really really great fragrance my my review for this one probably dates back to around 2016 maybe 2017 but i think it's 2016 and i'm still a really great fan of it it smells great i had forgotten about it but definitely highlighting it here santal the end it's from the house of Am Marood, a wonderful offering. And speaking of absinthe, I've got another fragrance with absinthe, another woody one, but definitely totally different from the last one. This is Bohemian Woods from the house of Atelier Oblique. Um, yeah, this is a great house, very underrated, and this is my favorite from the house. Really love the fact that it's got this kind of very antique woodiness with the notes because it's called Bohemian Woods. I feel like we're inside a church with a library next door. You can smell the old, you know, wooden furniture. There's leathery touches. And of course, the church has incense because this one has this kind of churchy, incensey touch in here as well. And then you've got that absinthe. Perhaps somebody's consuming some absinthe nearby. This one's not as absinthe heavy as the last fragrance but it's there you can totally notice it and the combination is really really great there's some iris and vanilla and saffron in here as well so it's a bit powdery lightly sweet and a bit leathery as well but a wonderful offering so this is atelier oblique bohemian woods let me know if you know that fragrance and last but not least this is a classic men's fragrance from the 90s 
So not so long ago, almost 30 years ago, it was launched. This is Lauder's Pleasures for Men. This is so, so good, and the current formulation smells really, really great. Sure, if you're not into the classic fragrances, this might not smell really great to you, but I feel like even though it smells lighter than before, it's a great smelling fragrance. So it's nectarines with watery notes, lavender, grapefruit, green notes, pepper, rose, geranium, oak moss, ebony, ginger, sandalwood. Great, great fragrance. It's very aromatic fragrance but it has fruitiness it's a bit pithy with the nectarines it's the skin there's a zing there it's a bit tart uh, not necessarily sweet but it's nicely blended with all the other notes and wears wonderfully and it, since it's an eau de toilette concentration and also a bit fruity and watery it's a total fragrance you can wear when it's warm outside it's not very very heavy but still smells great as i said to me it smells really wonderful the reformulations are definitely a good job but still very very light compared to what it used to be but still a wonderful offering that i had forgotten about so this is pleasures from lauder and the last the last fragrance that i'm talking about today let me know if you know these fragrances do you remember them? Have you forgotten about them? And also, uh, let me know if, what are the, some fragrances that you had forgotten about and you pulled out and you go, oh my god, these are so good. I can't believe I completely ignored them. Put a comment down so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.